Hey guys, today I wanted to make a very small video explaining the different kind of paint you can get inside of Photoshop. And the main things would be the difference between using opacity, using flow, or even using both at the same time, and then we'll touch up slightly on the mixer brush again. So what's the difference between opacity and flow? You can think of opacity as a way to control transparency of your stroke. So if we have transparency or opacity enabled, we can get this kind of layering effect of strokes, right? Where we can build up our paint. And this works similar to watercolors or very thin paint where you have to do several layers of paint to achieve you know, a darker or maybe more rich color. And conversely, you can think of flow as a amount of paint you have on your brush. So if we have a very strong stroke, we have like a full opacity, but then if we reduce the flow, we'll see that we have very little paint on our brush. And this is different because you can see that we are already getting the color, there's just not a lot of it. You'd, we don't have to build it up like Opacity does. So let's try to compare this two with a little painting, or I wouldn't even call it a painting, but yeah, <laughs> let's take a look at what we can do. So let's start with Opacity, you know. Let's just use what we got here, this nice random textures and you can see I'm just slowly building up my volumes and my colors and a nice thing about opacity is that you can see all the strokes that you layer and they kind of have a texture to them so you can design and create texture by working this way because you can layer strokes in different directions or different sizes so you still get a very very nice variety with this method and I'm not gonna do anything crazy or interesting but it's more to just show you guys the point of what I'm talking about here so this is with just opacity set on pen pressure now let's take a look at the same thing, but using flow instead of opacity, right? And let's do it here. You can see right away we have much thicker and bold strokes. We don't get to preserve the layering of the strokes that create the nice texture overall. But the advantage, at least for me, is that we are very, very fast to sculpt the forms that we want. You know, just one stroke and you have a form reading right away. So I feel like using just flow feels a little bit more like sculpting forms or it's used, or I personally use it because other people might use it for different things. You see, we're able to kind of like carve inside the form very, very easily. So yeah, very different result. You can see also in terms of edges. Uh, I almost feel like flow alone gives the painting a more natural feel to it, rather than the layering of opacity that feels a little bit more digital in a sense. But you can get very nice result using both. Or you can just use both things at the same time. And we can do another one of these. And you'll see when you press very little with these, you get a very, very soft stroke. Like a very transparent glaze. And of course, the nice thing about using both is that you can do a little bit of, you know, Sculpting the form if you press hard, like so. Just 
few strokes to sculpt the contour, have a nice hard stroke, but then you can also, you know, press very little and build that nice transition and layering of strokes. So it really depends what you're trying to achieve here. And last but not least, I wanted to just briefly touch upon the mixer brush. And here I have the mixer brush set on wet 1%. That's just because you need a little bit of wetness if you want paint to mix, otherwise it's not gonna mix. And normally with the brush, you're actually not exactly mixing paint, you're blending it together by layering or using the opacity of the brush. So it's not exactly mixing the way the mixer brush does. So let's take a look at that. You can see this has a very nice natural feel to it, kind of like a softness, even if we're using a very hard round brush. And of course the reason why is because this tool was designed for artists to mimic a more realistic kind of paint and the fact that it was probably never finished an engineer to completion. Um, it's too bad, but it's still a very, very nice tool. And you can see we can get a variety of hedges. Very hard or kind of soft and feathered by mixing the paint together. So these are the type of paints that are available to us in Photoshop. So to reiterate one last time, you can use opacity to layer the paint as if it was a very thin paint. So glazing and overlaying the strokes gives you a nice texture and preserve what's behind. Using just flow gives you more bold and sculptural feel to it. You can use it to block out shapes very, very quickly. You can use both. At the same time, if you want to get something in between, like a hybrid, you can press hard to sculpt and press very softly to just layer your paint. Or you can try in the mixer brush and just have fun with all the parameters. I have a whole video that goes a little bit more in depth on what each of these things at the top do. And I have a link of that in the description. Oh, one last thing, I just wanted to show you another of these Kind of useless rocks but yeah the same principle on the left we have this layering of strokes and you can see that we're preserving a little bit of that nice background noise texture and on the right instead we're not preserving any of that we're just defining this shape with very bold strokes so i hope this was useful to you guys if you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future videos please let me know and with this, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.